Welcome to the FinTech One-on-One Podcast. This is Peter Renton, Chairman and Co-Founder of FinTech Nexus. I've been doing this show since 2013, which makes this the longest running one-on-one interview show in all of FinTech. Thank you for joining me on this journey. If you like this podcast, you should check out our sister shows, The FinTech Blueprint with Lex Sokolin and FinTech Coffee Break with Isabel Castro, or listen to everything we produce by subscribing to the FinTech Nexus podcast channel. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our comprehensive news service. FinTech Nexus News not only covers the biggest FinTech news stories, our daily newsletter delivers the most important FinTech stories into your inbox every morning with special commentary on the top story of the day. Stay on top of FinTech news by subscribing at news.fintechnexus.com slash subscribe. Today on the show, we are doing something quite a bit different. We are talking about FinTech in the Caribbean. Yes, I am delighted to welcome Kurt Passard. He is the co-founder and CTO of FinTech Islands, along with Andrew Morris, who many of you know from his Money 2020 days. He is the chief content officer of FinTech Islands. And what is FinTech Islands? Well, it is the leading event in the Caribbean for FinTech. It's happening later this month in Barbados. I'm going to be there and it is going to be, I think, a fascinating event. So we obviously talk about the details of the event, but we also talk about you know, fintech in the Caribbean, what are the major trends, why it's important, why Americans should actually care about it. And we obviously go through also some of the details of the event as far as the social activities, what is going to be covered from a content perspective, the, the startup scene, and, uh, and much more. It was a fascinating discussion. Hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the podcast, Kurt and Andrew. Thank you. Hello. Okay, let's kick it off by doing some short introductions. Um, Kurt, why don't I start with you? Tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Yeah, so I'm uh, the founder and the CTO for FinTech Islands. My background is predominantly in the tech space, but more in the enterprise level type applications. I got involved in FinTech Islands just as a, a part of a broader mission to kind of give back to to my community to my region which is the the caribbean region you know the story of how that was founded we'll get into later but you know i met up with a few great people uh, along the way and uh they've helped me to put that vision together so now we're on this journey for fintech islands all right and uh andrew what's what's your background so i've been involved in fintech and in different ways for 25 years or so and the last a little more than a decade has been in producing events like the one that we're doing with with Kurt. I uh, was a management consultant in the payments industry. I was an executive at a bank and helped build a, a digital banking platform years ago. And I attended the first edition of the Money 2020 conference. And be careful when you go to conferences because you might end up working for them because that's <laughs> what happened to me. I spoke at the conference the next year and met the founders and became the, the first head of content, the chief content officer at, at Money 2020, sort of through that journey of helping to build that event, he sort of fell in love with, with the whole process, the creativity of, of building an event, the impact you can have on the industry and the, the community, and being able to look at a really big picture of things that are happening rather than you know, necessarily being a, a deep expert in only one thing. You could look across the landscape and i enjoyed that aspect as well me too yes <laughs> yeah anyway let's get to the sort of the founding story of fintech islands kurt you touched on it already but maybe you could just kind of tease out why you decided to start this event and what was the thinking there the impetus for this was really around the desire to contribute and to give back to the communities that you know we're from, and I'm from the Caribbean region. I'm, a, I'm from Barbados. You know, there's there's a level of frustration that goes into that. Where as we go back to the islands, as we go back to our our hometown, uh, we see somewhat lack of progress in certain spaces, specifically around technology, uh, around financial technology, around banking. 
uh, the way that things are transacted in the, in the Caribbean are a little, are, you know, a few years, if, if not maybe even a decade uh, behind North America and, and, and some other developing uh, countries. And being in the tech space, I work in, in North America, I, I became a little bit frustrated with the fact that we were so far behind. So I had this idea of, hey, what is the best way to influence innovation? What is the best way to influence impact within, you know, our, our home region? And, you know, the idea of bringing people that were experts, thought leaders, people that were innovating from around the world and bringing them into the, the, the area that you're trying to impact and having them contribute or share their stories may become a catalyst for that movement. Alison, who's the co-founder, who unfortunately is not able to make it today, she's been a longtime friend of mine and she lives in Miami with me. I reached out to her and said, hey, do you mind? Let's grab coffee a day. So we, we, we hooked up uh, for, for over coffee and I shared my idea to her. Now she is in the production space. She's in the events planning, massive productions, 20,000 type uh, people events, and she fell in love with it. So partnering with her and a few other folks that came along later, we kind of developed the idea of, of the, uh, the conference, developing the FinTech Island Conference. And it was really about two specific goals when we first talked about it in terms of the vision was really bringing the community of, of disruptive people to the island, leaders and people that are, are redefining technology in the, in, the, in the financial space, and then uh, try to make it serve as a catalyst for a building a more inclusive and efficient financial and technology sector uh, within the region. Uh, so those were kind of like the two main, main goals when we started. And then it's since then, you know, expanded and it has a life of its own and it's kind of growing, the community is growing. And the direction that we're taking it is also dynamic and it's also growing. So, you know, we're looking to see what happens this year and uh, and how we evolve the uh, the conference and, and what we're trying to do. Okay. And so then, Andrew, how did you first get involved here? Because you're not, you're not from Barbados. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm working on my honorary uh, membership. <laughs> so it was actually interesting. One of my colleagues from Money 2020, her name's Usha James, is originally from Trinidad. And she's a brilliant opera event operations leader and had already met Allison and Kurt and was beginning to help them you know, put together their vision for FinTech Islands. And she introduced us. She suggested that, that you know, with my background, I could be helpful to them. And, and I'm so happy that happened because not only am I not from Barbados, Peter, I, I had never been to the Caribbean on a vacation before I started working on this, this project, right? So it was this wonderful opportunity to learn about the culture of the place, to learn the nuances, you know, not... You know, if you're not familiar with the region, you'd start to think that, well, all Caribbean islands are the same. No, they're not, right? Every every island has its unique culture, its unique, uh, you know, there's three different languages, there's 45 million people, and there's a great amount of diversity across the region. And you start to understand that and see the, the talent that's there and the opportunity there is for FinTech. And so I was very attracted to it. And then with the Rolodex that I have from you know, years of being in the industry and the experience of putting together content for events, I knew that I could be helpful, right, to, to grow the event. So so that I got connected through a mutual friend and helped launch the event last year. And, and this is this is our second edition coming up. And and as Kurt's saying, it's it's hosting a truly global conference in the region. And and that's the way that it can be a catalyst for the fintech ecosystem there. I've actually never been to the Caribbean either, but I feel like I know it well because I'm Australian and we have the game of cricket that the West Indies, when I was growing up, and I was growing up in the 80s in Australia, the West Indies were the greatest cricket nation on the planet. So I got exposed to a lot of the of the Caribbean there and uh, not quite as good as they used to be, but uh, when you had the likes of uh, Vivian Richards and Clive Lloyd and those characters back in the 80s, it was it was a lot of fun to watch. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> Why should Americans, because this is obviously, I've got a primary American audience for this podcast. Why should Americans care? We're going to talk about the event in a little bit, but I want to talk about the Caribbean first. Why should Americans care about this from a fintech perspective, this region? So one is it's, it's a larger market than you realize. Now, I, I threw out the 45 million people. That's the population of the whole region. and. That's larger than Canada, 
it's about the size of Spain, right? So it's it's many different smaller island nations, a lot of diversity there. To scale a business, there's some complexity of doing that, but it's a big part of the world. So that that's one thing. The other is that there's still a lot of cash in the Caribbean. And there's a lot of opportunity to digitally transform and make things more efficient and more inclusive and to help small businesses and to help consumers. And so there's opportunity there. There's tremendous talent in the region. And there are uh, governments and regulators that that care and are trying to think of ways to balance protecting consumers with innovation and you know how can we do that? And it's not easy to do, but there's experimentation and there's a willingness to uh, to try new things. And so I think it it becomes an exciting place to uh, to you know you things like central bank digital currencies that uh, you know one of some of the early experiments with with that uh, idea have been in the Caribbean. There's maybe a little less barriers to uh, to try new things, and so I think it makes it attractive. To add on on top of what Andrew uh, mentioned, yeah, it's it's one of the, the one of the most untapped region. If you look at all the spaces that um, you know people are expanding in terms of technology and and, and innovation and and fintech in, in specifically, the other thing is that uh, you know with with the global economy, you know the, the, the boundaries and the borders are are less. They're they're more ambiguous, right? It, they're, they're you know it's pretty pretty much non-existent. Tapping into another for, potential forty five million. Uh, market is is just a huge opportunity for a lot of companies in in North America, Europe, Africa. We have you know uh, interests all around. And then the other thing is that there's a huge diaspora in North America, the UK, uh, Europe, you know Africa, and they play such a pivotal role. The amount of transactions and the dollars that are flowing back into the region, back and forth into the region, is is tremendous. And just tapping into that and figuring out how you could make opportunities or create opportunities from that is is another area that I think is is not looked at enough and is a potential for a huge upside for any business or any company trying to go into the Caribbean region. The diaspora is a really interesting point. U.S. cities like New York, even Toronto and Canada, Miami, of course, because of proximity, but also Atlanta, where I'm based, that one of our speakers at the event is the chief financial officer of TIAA. Right, reports to to Sunda Ducket, you know this rock star CEO, huge job. He's from Barbados, and he's coming back to to speak and to be a part of our event, Dave Dowrich. And so you see a lot of you know influence of the diaspora globally, and and how that can. And then with the tourism in the region, so many global connections that pass through that part of the world, and it's just an amazing melting pot for kind of global commerce, if you will. So what's sort of the state of fintech in the Caribbean right now? What are the important trends that uh, that people should be aware of? One thing that I'm seeing is, you know, we put together the content for the event is some of the the traditional players, the, the incumbent banks and, and larger players are working to digitally transform the way they do business. And they're doing it by in some cases by being supportive of fintech startups, which is interesting. The sponsor of our startup pitch is a bank, Republic Bank. They're doing it by partnering with companies like systems integrators like IBM, bank as a service, embedded banking providers like MBank, another company called InfoCorp. So you're seeing these global providers that are involved in banking as a service and open finance beginning to partner and engage with Caribbean financial institutions to help them digitize the way they do business. So that that's one thing that's interesting. The other is um, starting to see some startups get some traction, right? There's a, there's a really interesting company called First Atlantic Commerce that processes e-commerce e payments all across the region that's doing very well. There are a number of mobile wallet providers doing some interesting things. And so it's still early days, which is why this event exists to be that catalyst and to propel the region. But there are signs of uh, that the region's receptive and ready to kind of proceed with this fintech revolution in, in the Caribbean. Yeah, so we're seeing, yeah, as Andrew mentioned, there's a lot of wallet payment wallets that are coming up in the in the region. Uh, so I think cashless is a big is a big thing. 
there's a lot of kind of like small business, micro type business transactions that happen that are, are predominant in the region, very cash centric. And there's a lot of push to kind of move those to a digital, digital form, a digital platform, whether it's either payment wallet or direct B2B transactions with the service provider or banking, banking institution. So we're seeing a lot of that. And then, you know, we're seeing also a lot of push from the, from the big incumbent uh, banks in terms of financial inclusion and a lot of uh, education, right? Trying to push more into the market where towards the young people um, and, and educating them in terms of like financial literacy and stuff like that. So a lot of them are adopting and white labeling um, a lot of products that teach that. So they're embedding those products into their suite of applications or into their banking profile or portfolio of applications. So we're seeing that. So, so it's, we're seeing really, really positive science and really good traction. Uh, things that five years ago you would have never seen. When we first uh, kicked off this event, we started it back in uh, 2021, preparing for our, our launch in 2022. You know, there was a lot of skepticism from some of the major players in terms of where this would go and whether there was a real true need for this type of di digitization and innovation in, in this space. But we're happy to say in such a short space between 2021 and now, we're seeing a lot of adoption and a lot of support from the big players in, in, the, in the industry. The, the other thing I would just say is the central banks and regulator, you know, the innovation that happens there with regulatory sandboxes and, and central bank digital currencies, That I think that's good for the environment. And there's partnerships with the private sector in some of those initiatives as well. Okay, so let's talk about the event itself. Maybe you could just give us a little bit of a synopsis about some of the, just some of the details where it is, when it is, and uh, what people can expect who, who are going to be attending. We're, we're hosting a, a global event on the beautiful island of Barbados. We have a, a very comprehensive agenda in terms of bringing thought leaders, innovators, uh, startups, academics to the event to contribute and, and share their stories and learn and interact. We're really, really embracing the networking and the one-on-one -on -one type uh, activities because I think that's where we see a lot of value, especially from the first one that we did. I think that came out, uh, came through very clearly that that was one of the most important aspects of it. So we're really leaning into making sure we make the right connections. We put people together, we put people, the right people in the right room to make those connections, make those deals. The other major thing that uh, I would say about it is that what we really wanted to do is also showcase the host island. We didn't want it to only make it about everyone coming to the conference and being stuck in a, in, you know, in a, in a presentation type setting. We wanted to make sure we embrace and bring the culture and bring the feel of the host island. So as part of it, we're really leaning into the experience where we share the culture of the host island. We share the culture of Barbados. We share the culture of the people there. And we're intertwining that into the mix of how we network, right? So that is very important. We have a lot of uh, different activities that tap into that and allow people to meet and network in a setting that is not so sterile as a, a meeting room or a presentation room, but something that's more natural and organic where we think would be more conducive for better partnerships and better conversations. It's, you know, what we're trying to do is, is, is tremendous. Um, people would get a lot of benefit from uh, attending the conference. I never once saw people exchange LinkedIn profiles on a catamaran when I was working at Money 20. <laughs> but that does happen at FinTech Islands. And then in terms of the, the speaker lineup and the content for the event, you know, it's over three days. The first day is is a bit more content heavy than the, the second two. There's a lot happening on that first day. A general session that features Peter Renton. You may have heard of him. He's a joker. But you know, but Peter, we're excited that you're going to be there and and doing an interview with a, a senior executive from from Mastercard, who's one of our major sponsors. Um, but there's some great content in the morning general session, and then we've we've organized some what we call deep dives uh, that cover different aspects of fintech. There are there are nine different topics. I won't rattle them all off, but it's things like artificial intelligence and open finance and digital assets and innovation in banking. So, uh, you know, opportunities in, in breakout sessions for for people to learn about what, what's happening in, in different areas of FinTech. And there are 140 speakers at the event. 
about half of them are from the Caribbean and, and kind of feature the, the, the best of the region in, in fintech, but the rest are from the US, Latin America, Africa, Europe, they're from all over the world. So it's a very global lineup of speakers. Interestingly, more than half of our speakers are the founder or CEO of the organization they, they represent. So it's a very senior group. And um, we're really excited about the bankers and fintechs and investors and policymakers and academics that are a part of that that lineup. And all the music and culture of the place where you share those experiences with people in the industry means you you, you build relationships. And that's that's how the event's designed. You mentioned the startup area. There's a, is there a startup competition? What's all that about? Thank you for bringing that up. So we've selected, we had an application process. We even did some roadshow, smaller events, pitch events around the region during the year and selected 10 early stage startups that are either a, a Caribbean founder or they're clearly you know tied to the region. And it's a, it's a very kind of diverse representation of different islands and different aspects of, of fintech, but at 10 companies all sort of precede early companies. And someone that I think you and I both know, Matteo Rizzi, you know, keynote speaker and advisor and investor, has started a nonprofit called the the Time Pledge Network, where investors and founders will donate time to uh, to mentor founders in, in different markets around the world. So we've organized some mentoring sessions for the uh, the 10 founders, and all 10 of them will present on the main stage at our event on uh, the final day. Uh, the top three will win cash prizes, but all of them have this great opportunity to showcase what they're doing as they build their company and receive complimentary passes. And Interestingly, there is a program through the United Nations uh, International Trade Center where they also are working to support startups in the region. And so in addition to uh, you know, sponsoring the event, UN International Trade Center had another cohort of startups that they're hosting to attend the event. Through their program and through ours, we're giving a lot of support to those young entrepreneurs. Beyond the event, how can people engage? How can people stay engaged with FinTech Islands? If they can't make it in January, how do they stay engaged? Yeah, so we, they can sign up for our newsletter if they go to fintechislands.com and just sign up for our, our newsletter that goes out regularly, keeping us um, abreast of you know what we're working on, topics that are very relevant to, to the space and the industry, um, and then what's happening with the next planning for our next event. So that would be kind of the best way. And then also engage with us uh, via our you know, social platforms, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, and on Facebook. We're very, very engaged on those platforms. And uh, whenever anyone reaches out, we, we engage with them and we, we connect with them. Final thoughts on the event on Caribbean FinTech before we close? I know that that would be a quick turnaround by the time people are listening to this podcast, but it's something to consider to... Uh, look at purchasing a pass and, and joining us this year. This event is really unique for those of us that attend a lot of conferences um, that are in places like New York and Las Vegas. And, and it's not just because of the beauty of the place, although it's a wonderful, beautiful island, but there's a real authenticity to this community and you know, very mission-driven group of people that, that want to make a difference um, in this part of the world. There's also opportunities to connect with people that are not from the region, right? So I have folks that I invited from North America and Europe who attended last year and made connections, you know, globally at the event. But we'd we'd love love to have have uh, anyone join us, and then if not this year, to engage as Kurt described for uh, future events. Andrew, Kurt, thank you very much for for coming on the show today. Thank you have, for having us, Peter. Now, Peter, thanks so much for ha having us, and we look forward to seeing you at uh, Fintech Islands here soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for listening. Please go ahead and give the show a review on the podcast platform of your choice and go tell your friends and colleagues about it. Anyway, on that note, I will sign off. I very much appreciate you listening, and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.